Welcome back to Greg's Maker Corner. If you're wondering if you should go with a Voron 2.4 or a Trident, or even if you want to know a little bit about the Voron Zero, this video is for you. I'm going to be talking about a comparison. I've spent about three months uh, with the Trident and a little bit more than that with the Voron 2.4, so I've got a really good baseline. If you're on the fence on which model and you're, you're really not sure, that's my intent, is to give you some good information to make a good decision. The good news is uh, you can't go wrong with either machine. But if you want to know a little bit more, stay tuned. Uh, this is the Voron 2.4, and you can see here that it's pretty much a R2. There are different versions and flavors of the Voron 2.4, the R2 being the latest one as of this video. This particular Voron 2.4 is a 350 millimeter version, so this is the largest size that you can uh, that you really want to build on the 2.4. It also comes in a 300 or a, even a 250. And here is the Voron Trident. Trident that you see here is a 300 millimeter. This is an LDO kit as well. So it comes with some nice extras like a touch screen. It also came with a all the parts that I needed pretty much for a stealth burner minus the motor. And as I go through this video, I'm gonna call out some things that are maybe a little less standard and what would be known as mods or upgrades. For example, on the 2.4, I have these titanium backers. And I think, um, and you can't see the one here, but it's behind this section. But uh, this is important to add on the 2.4, I think, because it helps with the keep the uh, gantry rigid, and especially under heat. Uh, heat can cause these aluminum extrusions to warp a little bit. The Voron Trident is an LDO kit, and it's fairly stock, so there's not a whole lot of bells and whistles upgrades on this one. I do have the full, uh, full, fully functional after, uh, stealth burner here, and it's got the LED lights as well, which are really cool. It also, it does have a touch screen that came with the kit, so I do like the touch screen. This is kind of the standard um, non-touch screen minus the button because the button was missing. But, um, so I printed one, but it works fine. There are a lot of differences, but there's probably more similarities than there are differences with these two machines. So the big, probably the biggest difference in terms of kinematic is that this has a flying gantry. What I mean by a flying gantry is that this gantry is all belted, so that it's a belted Z. You can see there's four different Z belts, and the gantry itself moves up and down. And right now I'm just going through the homing process. On this machine, homing is a little bit different, so I'm gonna go ahead and come down here and press home all. So here you can see, of course, the, the, the Z is set up different. We have lead screws, a tri-point leveling system. So that's where, that's where the main differences are, to be honest. I mean, obviously the bed being located in a different location. So you've got it up top here. You've got it at the bottom here. Um, that, that's pretty much the main difference with these machines. If you look at, say, the idlers, the front idlers here, you're going to see that they're very similar on both machines. Same thing with the, uh, the gantry parts, the A and B drives, as well as the corner blocks. The difference on the Voron 2.4 is that there are whole spaces for the belts to flow through on these pieces. Beyond that, they're pretty much the same part. You can see the layout of the Z cable chain is a little different on the Trinet. And that it's kind of coming over here to the left and then going down. 2.4, the cable, the Z cable chain goes more in the center. All four corners of the 2.4, you have motors like this for the Z drive. Whereas on the Trinet, the motors are kind of hidden behind the skirt and they're just holding the lead screw and you only have three of them. There's a single linear rail in the back on the trinet and there's a lead screw in front of it and there's a lead screw on the front too as well. And that's just enough to create a good plane for leveling. In order to do the auto leveling, you need to run quad gantry level. And what this is going to do is it's going to go around to four points along the bed and they're both both of 2.4 and the Trinet, the stock setup is to have a um, Omron probe in the back, and that's what's sensing the location between the bed and the tool head, or in the probe. Both also have a Z end stop here in the back, and before they do the um, leveling, they're going to use that for the height. So this is going to level the gantry, but the nozzle's height is going to be set based on that, so they're done separately. Okay, and now we're going to run Z-Tilt on the Trinet, which is this, it's doing the same type of thing that, it's, that the 2.4 is doing with QGL, 
or quad gantry leveling. The difference here is it's only using three points. The goal here is to get the bed parallel to the gantry at all three points. And mine was already pretty, uh, pretty good, so it only did it once. One thing that I have noticed is that I seem to get more, to get fewer retries on, on the trident. So it might only take one try to go through everything than I do on the 2.4. Sometimes this takes maybe two to three tries. I think part of that is just, it's just a bigger machine. The other part of that is when you turn off the machine, um, this is going to sag a little bit. So because there's more weight on the back and there's nothing to hold those motor to keep those motors held up. You can see both machines also use the same paneling system, pretty much exactly. So you've got these corner clips, you've got these door clips, there's magnets in there to keep them shut. Um, there's really not a whole lot of difference, even the back, there's room for a filter, which I do not run currently. Uh, I do have a filter that I use when I print, so that helps keep the air purified. But uh, you can run an, a Nevermore filter, which is a popular mod that sits in between. You can also run one uh, on the Trident, although it's seated usually in a different location. Machines are going to have fans that cool the electronics. You can kind of see the electronics in here. There's also a recommended piece that sits in between uh, the bottom of the machine and the electronics, which I do not install, mainly because it's kind of fiddly and I like to work on my machines a lot, but you can certainly install that. But these fans are pretty good. They're, they're putting a lot of airflow through. And they're, uh, again, you can really feel the airflow coming out. So the electronics, they're very, both machines are very similar as well. Uh, you might have a few different components, but for the most part, it's the same, same uh, controller as well. In terms of other material differences, let's, start, let's first start off with print quality. I have printed a lot on both machines. I did an entire Toys for Tots campaign and print roughly, I think it was over 300 parts across both of these machines. And I printed the same models on the machines. There was no discernible difference in quality between either machine. I know some people have had problems with lead screws and issues and binding and, and whatnot. I've never run into that on the Trident. I have seen that on other machines, but I think just the way that it's used and the bearings, the, the actual bearings that they use for the design, there's really not much chance for it to bind up or have a lot of some of those traditional lead screw issues that you might see, especially on some lower quality machines. Print quality is also going to be very dependent on the extruders that you're using. In my case, I have an LGX Lite on the Voron 2.4. I also have a Stealth Burner on the Trident, as I mentioned earlier. They're both really good with PLA, and they're both really good with um, ABS, ASA, and, and etc. So from a typical filament, you're not going to see much difference. The reason that I have an LGX Lite on my 2.4 is because I really want a very fast TPU printing. I do a lot of TPU prints and I sell some of those prints so I want to make sure that I can print it as quickly and as high quality as possible and I find that the LGX Lite just does a better job with TPU. I also like the reproducibility of just having a simple lever that the LGX Lite does. The My one nitpick on the on the stealth burner a lot of extruders like that is that there's it's kind of hard to you have to turn a knob to set your um, your tension on your filament it's, uh, it's harder to tell where you're at in terms of tension generally speaking you're going to get the same quality regardless even of extruder as long as you've built it well and i would say one one challenge is that building the stealth burner there are some really t um, tight tolerances on the parts so if you have parts that are a little bit over extruded they're not going to fit in there right and you might, you know, you might be off in terms of your printing. So you probably have a higher chance for getting it right with an LGX Lite, but those are also still a little bit more experimental at the moment. And just finding directions on how to build one is a challenge. So I would recommend going with a stealth burner unless you really need TPU. In terms of preheating time, if you are printing high temp filaments like ABS and ASA, you are going to need to preheat your machine. Um, some people will go as far as putting in G-code that waits until the chamber thermistor is at a certain temperature, usually around 50 degrees Celsius. I generally wait about 20 to 30 minutes on my 2.4 um, at the at the max, and, and I usually wait for it around 40 to 45 because otherwise it's just going to take a lot longer. I'm in a basement; it takes longer to heat up. So, but I, I get good results with that. Since hot air rises, uh, you could probably make a little bit of a case that on the Trident it's going to heat up slightly faster. Um, I don't know that that's really that significant. Maybe maybe you'll save yourselves five or ten minutes in terms of getting 
printing, getting started printing. In terms of overall print speed, I, I actually print at about the same speed on both machines. So I do around 120 to 150 for pretty much everything except for perimeters, external perimeters and top surfaces. So that's plenty fast enough for me. I know some people will push it way more than that. Um, on the 350 machine, I run about uh, 3500 max acceleration. If I go to 4K um, on, on my particular machine, I have noticed layer shifting. So I try to always run it under 4K. Uh, because of the floating gantry on the 2.4, that should allow you to, in theory, print a little bit faster. Another benefit, potentially on the Trident side, is that if you are planning on adding something like an, uh, a tool changer, a tool head changer, that's going to be a heck of a lot easier to do since the gantry is fixed and you don't have to worry about it going up and down. Um, so a lot like if you do an E3D style where you're going to park the head, grab a new head, and then move it around and start printing, that's going to be way less complex on the Trident. And I believe there's even some mods out there that allow you to do that. Um, on the 2.4, I'm not sure that I've seen any tool changer options, so you're probably going to be limited to more of the MMU, like the... Uh, Enraged Carrot Rabbit Feeder uh, style um, or the Palette Pro, that sort of thing. Probably one of the biggest considerations is you're going to have to build these machines. And if you are a new builder, I definitely would not start with anything but a Trident. Um, I actually went probably in reverse order in terms of complexity. I started with a Voron Zero, which is uh, supposedly the most difficult build because of all the small pieces. And if you mess up, you got to redo stuff and tear stuff down. The Voron 2.4 I built next, which is pretty complicated because of the flying gantry. There's a lot of things that can go wrong on that. Um, if you're not if you're not quite square on the gantry, um, you know you can really be off, and that can cause a lot of problems. Uh, on the Trident, I would say just because of the it's the newest machine, it's got the the most updated manual. You're probably going to have the easiest time building that machine. I, I've heard that the switch wire is a little easier even than the Trident, but I've not built one of those, so I can't say. But I would say if, if this is your first Voron and you're on the fence, um, a 2.4 is a great way to go, but really a Trident ultimately is going to be the easiest one to build. So keep that in mind. And I've done a lot of support in the Discord for both the 2.4 and the Trident and the V0. And I would say um, in terms of the questions that you tend to get, uh, I tend to see a lot more challenges and problems as people are building 2.4s mainly because they're not maybe they're not as experienced or mechanically inclined and you really do need to to have a good sense of of that on the other hand in terms of modifications in the community and people's experience and familiar familiarity with the machines you're going to find a lot more people have built the voron 2.4s they've they've been around longer so uh, if you're looking for mods and things like that you're going to find quite a bit more for the voron 2.4 style uh, machine than you will the trident the Trident, last I checked, it's still under a thousand serial numbers. The Voron 2.4 is over 4,000, and the Voron Zero is um, maybe a couple thousand at this point. The Voron Zero is easy to explain. That one's probably the cheapest of the three. In terms of overall price, you're going to spend roughly, depending on the, if you go with a kit, you're you're going to spend the least because you have everything supplied to you. Um, if you go with a, if you go with self-sourcing. Uh, you're most likely going to spend a lot more because you're going to have to buy more than you need. So I would definitely recommend looking at kits. Uh, I, I prefer LDO. I also think West3D has great kits and that's what my 2.4 is. You're going to spend roughly $1,500 on a Trident or a Voron 2.4, maybe a little bit more on the Voron 2.4. And then on the, the LDO kit for the Voron Zero, uh, you're probably going to spend around Six to seven, seven fifty, I think was was the peak of those kits. You can also go with something like a Formbot kit. I've never tried one of those, but I've heard people uh, pretty pleased with those. Uh, there, you might get varying degrees of quality, but you might spend around you know a little bit less. But I would recommend the LDO for sure for any of these kits. And here's my Voron Zero with LGX Lite Bontech uh, LGX Lite toolhead. Otherwise, it's pretty much a stock Voron. And this is a great machine. Uh, I've done a few mods like added these handles, which I definitely recommend. But, um, you know, the biggest downside to this machine is that it's small and you're only going to get a 120 millimeter or so bed. On the plus side, you can actually fit a lot of prints on this machine. And the other plus side is since it's so small and it's constrained, you can print really fast. And I've done, even just with the stock Voron, I've, I've done well over 300 millimeters per second. 
and even TPU. Um, I'm printing TPU around 120 millimeters per second and uh, with no problem at all. War on Zero is more similar to the Trident than the 2.4, although there are mods that allow you to make it with the same uh, flying gantry. Um, I end up having to level this bed maybe every 10 to 20 prints, but there are there is a nice uh, Karagami mod, which is a replaces the stock bed, and I think it's a little more stable. See, even the, the corner blocks are similar. The motor drives are a little similar. There's also tensioners on the drives, which make it a little bit easier to tension the belts. But this machine, because of the small size, it's incredibly easy to screw up when you're building. Um, these these are 1515 linear or 1515 aluminum extrusions, and in a lot of places you have to preload nuts. And if you forget to preload those nuts, there's no way to slip them in afterwards easily. Um, so you're likely going to be tearing things down to get to them. All right, before I go into my conclusion, I just wanted to show the, each of the printers printing. So here you can see the Voron 2.4 printing out some toys for tots. This is the Voron Trinet printing out some parts for my Voron 2.4. And this is the Voron 0.1 printing. All right, in conclusion, there are a lot to like about all three of the machines, the Voron 2.4, the Trident and the Voron Zero. I think uh, if I were to do it all over again, knowing what I know now, would I do it differently? I think I probably would. I would probably start with the Voron Trident because I think it's the easiest machine to build and it's it's gonna print just every bit as good a quality as the Voron 2.4. If you are mechanically inclined and budget is an issue, you're gonna be able to get bootstrapped with the Voron Zero. It was really intended to be able to print parts probably the cheapest way possible but for ABS and ASA, which can be difficult to print, especially if you don't have a fully enclosed machine. So if this is your very first uh, Voron and you're mechanically inclined, maybe you build a few printers before, like a Prusa Mark III, if you're really feeling up to it, I think you could start with the Voron Zero. Just keep in mind that it is gonna be, the, it is probably one of the most complicated Voron machines to build because of the tiny parts and you know, the need to redo things. So if you're not a patient person, you might just get frustrated and, you know, want to junk it out the window. Um, for everybody else, I would definitely say try to go with the Trinet first if it's your first forum. Now, if, if you really want to go with what the community, where the community has largely gone before, and you like the idea of, you know, being surrounded by 4,000 other uh, Voron owners that have already built a 2.4, it's a great way to get going as well. Uh, it's just a little bit harder to get set up and running and calibrated because you've got a lot of potential gantry issues, uh, things being out of square, um, tightening things up, loosening, adjusting. If you're okay doing that, then a 2.4, you could start out just fine on one. But if it were me doing it all over again, I would definitely go with the Trident. All right, well, I hope the experiences that I've had with 3D printing with these machines has helped you make an educated decision on what machine you might want to go with. And once again, all three of these machines are great. You're going to get good support for all of them, and I don't think you can go wrong. So, hey, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And thanks again for watching Greg's Maker Corner.